Hello student, welcome to the lecture series of instrumentation and sensor. So today in this lecture, we will start our new chapter that is frequency domain signal processing and analysis. Okay. So today in this lecture, we will learn about what is frequency domain analysis of signals, then what is Fourier transform, what is discrete Fourier transform and what do you mean by analyzing. Okay. So let us start with frequency domain analysis of this signal okay so meaning of this that is analysis of the signal in frequency domain okay in previous lectures we have studied about analysis of the signals in time domain okay so in this chapter we will learn about analysis of the signal in frequency domain okay so let us understand about it so in engineering and statistics frequency domain is a term used to describe the analysis of mathematical functions or signals with respect to frequency rather than time okay so frequency domain is nothing but that is used to describe the analysis of mathematical functions and signals okay so the most common purpose for analysis of the signal in the frequency domain is the analysis of the signal properties okay it is nothing but the analysis of the signal properties okay so the engineer can study the spectrum to determine which frequencies are present in the input signal and which are they missing okay so with the help of this analysis you can better identify the characteristics of the signal and add or subtract frequency to the original signal according to this okay so analysis of the signal in frequency domain is nothing but the analysis of the mathematical functions and analysis of the signal properties okay so signals are converted from time or space domain to frequency domain usually with the help of Fourier transform okay which we have studied in our mathematics that with the help of Fourier transform you can easily convert the function which are in time domain to frequency domain okay so now we know that a time domain graph may display the changes over a time you can clearly see in this figure here we have two graph first one for time domain and second one for frequency domain so the time domain graph may display changes over the time okay and a frequency domain graph display how much of the signal is present among each given frequency band you can clearly see in this figure so frequency domain works by allowing a representation of a qualitative behavior of the system as well as characteristics of the way the system responds to the changes in the bandwidth gain phase shift and harmonic okay so discipline in which frequency domain is used for graphical representation is in music okay so so generally frequency domain is used for graphical representation of the music often audio producer and engineer display an audio signal within a frequency domain in order to better understand the shape and character of the audio signal okay so, so frequency domain is generally used to analysis of the audio signals okay so this is why we are using frequency domain and why we are analyze the signal in frequency domain okay and with the help of Fourier transform we can easily convert the signal which is in time domain now let us understand what is Fourier series or we can say that Fourier transformation okay so so Fourier series is a state in which periodic signals are represented by summing up the signs and cosines and multiple with a certain weight okay so Fourier series is nothing but which represent or which convert the periodic signal into the form of sine and cosine form okay so periodic signals are further broken down into more signals with some properties which are listed below for example broken signals are sine or cosines or next new signals are harmonic of each other okay so let us understand Fourier series analysis of step edge so you can clearly see in this figure we have function which have minus one value if x less than zero and one value for otherwise value okay so this is a signal which is in the form of we can say that the periodic signal form okay so with the help of Fourier transform we can easily analyze this type of signal or you can say that we can easily convert this type of signal into the continuous sine or cosine wave with the help of Fourier transform okay so now let us understand what do you mean by Fourier transformation. So Fourier transformation is a tool for image processing. 
and it is used for decomposing an image into the sine and cosine components okay so fourier transformation is nothing but it is a tool which help us to convert the periodic signal into the sine and cosine component form okay so we can say that the input image is in time domain or we can say that spatial domain and the output is represented in the Fourier or frequency domain okay so with the help of Fourier transform we can easily convert the time domain function into frequency domain okay so Fourier transformation is used in wide range of the applications such as image filtering image compression image analysis and image reconstruction okay so this is the use of Fourier transformation okay so now let us understand how we can convert the time domain function to frequency domain so a continuous periodic function f of t with a period t can be expressed as a linear combination of sinusoidal which is known as a Fourier series okay so with the help of this equation that is f of t is equal to sigma u is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity into a n cos 2 pi by t into t plus b u sin u into 2 pi by t into t so with the help of this equation we can easily convert the periodic function f of t into sine and cosine component forms okay so now recall the formula that is e raised to j n x is equal to cos n x plus j sin n x okay where j is equal to under root of minus 1 okay so now we can say that Fourier series can also be expressed as f of t is equal to sigma u is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x u into e raised to j u 2 pi by t into t okay because e raised to j and x is equal to cos n x plus j sin n x okay so this is the representation of Fourier transformation so with the help of this equation we can easily convert the function which is in time domain to frequency domain okay now let us understand what is discrete Fourier transform so the discrete Fourier transform convert the finite sequence of equal space samples of a function into the same length sequence of equally spaced samples of the discrete time Fourier transform which is a complex value function of frequency okay so discrete time signal can be analyzed or decomposed into the series of sine and cosine so this representation is called discrete Fourier transform okay so the discrete Fourier transform that convert a finite sequence of equally spaced samples of a function into the same length of a sequence of a equally spaced samples okay you can clearly see in this figure discrete Fourier transform pursues a periodic signal or any periodic signal x with n points x0 x1 up to xn minus 1 is automatically assumed periodic with fundamental period t is equal to n into delta t you can clearly see in this figure uh, here we have original signal so how we can say that this is original signal so a periodic signal or we can say that assume periodic signal x with n points x0 x1 up to xn is automatically assumed periodic with the fundamental period t is equal to n into delta t okay so we can say that the discrete Fourier transform is one of the most powerful tool in digital signal processing which enables us to find the spectrum of a finite duration signal okay so there are many circumstances in which we need to determine the frequency content of a time domain signal okay so at that time we can use discrete Fourier transform to determine the frequency content of a time domain signal okay so this can be achieved by the discrete Fourier transform okay so the discrete Fourier transform is usually considered as one of most powerful tool in digital signal processing okay and also discrete Fourier transform has many any survey applications okay so with the help of discrete Fourier transform we can easily determine the frequency content of a time domain signal okay so now let us understand why we need discrete Fourier transform okay so as you can clearly see in this figure let us assume that function x of t shown in figure is a continuous time signal that we need to analyze okay 
so a digital computer cannot work with a continuous time signal so at that time we need to take some samples of x of t and analyze this samples instead of this original signal okay so here we have to analyze this continuous signal but the digital computer cannot work with the continuous time signal because in digital computer only we need digital signal okay so here we have continuous time signal so here we have to take some samples of x of t and then analyze this sample instead of this original signal okay so our digital computer can process only a finite number of samples okay so we have to make an approximation and use a limited number of these samples okay so at that time we need to estimate the frequency content of a given signal so at the time we can use discrete Fourier transform to determine the frequency content of a given signal okay so at the time we can use discrete Fourier transform okay you can clearly see in this figure how we can use the discrete Fourier transform to estimate the frequency content of a given signal okay so rewrite the Fourier transform in discrete form okay so here we have Fourier transform equation that is f of t is equal to sigma u is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x u into e raised to j u 2 pi by t into t okay now with the help of this t is equal to n into delta t so we can rewrite this equation that is xi is equal to sigma u is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x u e raised to j u into 2 pi i upon n okay where j is equal to under root of minus so Fourier coefficient x u is a complex number so then the amplitude and the frequency of the component of the signal corresponding to this x u can be defined as amplitude that is mod of x u is equal to under root of real part of x q square plus imaginary part of x u square and frequency that is f is equal to u into 1 upon t is equal to u into 1 upon n into delta t okay so with the help of this Fourier transform equation we can easily rewrite this discrete Fourier transform equation okay now the highest frequency that can be resolved from a discrete time signal is 1 upon 2 delta t so the Fourier series need not to extend beyond u is equal to n by 2 okay so this is the main criteria because negative frequency are not physically measured and discrete Fourier transform is usually defined only between u is equal to 0 to u is equal to n by 2 you can clearly see in this figure here we have n point in time domain okay and here you can clearly see that with the help of discrete Fourier transform this is n point in frequency domain containing both negative and positive frequency part but here because negative frequency are not physically measured so discrete Fourier transform is usually only between u is equal to 0 to u is equal to n by 2 okay so this is nothing but the explanation about the discrete Fourier transform and why we use discrete Fourier transform okay so discrete Fourier transform is generally used to determine the frequency content in time domain or we can say that in time domain signal okay now let us understand what do you mean by aliasing okay so in sound and image generation aliasing is the generation of a false frequency along with the correct one when doing frequency sampling okay so aliasing is nothing but the generation of the false frequency along with the correct one when we are doing frequency sampling okay so, so for image this produce a jagged edge or straight step effect okay and for sound it produce a buzz okay so you can clearly see in this figure this one is our original signal but when we are doing frequency sampling so the generation of the false frequency is along with the correct one so you can clearly see in this figure this produce a buzz and jagged edge effect okay so aliasing occurs when the sampling frequency is not high enough okay and aliasing occurs so when sampling frequency is not high enough at that time aliasing occurs okay so it causes a high frequency components to fold over and appear aliased into a lower frequency okay 
So the only solution to the aliasing problem is to ensure that the sampling rate is higher than twice the highest frequency present in the signal. Okay, so only the solution to remove the aliasing that to ensure that the sampling rate is higher than twice the highest frequency present in the signals okay so this is the most common effect that occur during this frequency sampling in sound and image generation okay polarizing is nothing but the generation of the false frequency along with the correct one okay so in this lecture we have studied about what is frequency domain and how we can analyze the signal in frequency domain what is the purpose of frequency domain and how we can convert the time domain signal into frequency domain signal with the help of Fourier transform and what is the use of discrete Fourier transform and how we can get the equation of the discrete Fourier transform with the help of Fourier transform. Okay, thank you for watching this video.